Well, good afternoon. My name is Nora Trenacosta. I am with Text Help, and I am here to give you an overview of Read and Write Gold. So before we get started, I just want to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. We are using GoToMeeting today, um, so you'll be able to ask questions in the, the side comments. We'll be recording this webinar um, in a separate recording, so you should feel comfortable um, asking those questions. We will um, post this webinar on the CORE website, and you can see the um, the link right here to the items um, that we'll be sharing with you. So this webinar will be available for you. All of the slides that we're using today will be available for you. All of the links and the documents that we're talking about will also be posted for you. So you can, um, you know, follow along today, but you can also go back and use that video um, and you'll be able to bring up the documents and the websites that we're talking about and you can follow along as you like if you want some additional practice. We're doing another webinar just for parents, so they'll be getting some, um, some background on the basic reading tools and writing conventions, um, so they'll have their own video um, that they can use to look back on, as well as the resources that are here from Text Help. So our embedded videos in the program and all of the great videos on our YouTube site and our website, those are all available for you as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and jump in, um, but just know that this will be available for you later, and uh, we want to make sure that you have all the help you need. If you need help getting the program installed, you want to make sure that you talk to your principal, um, and the rest of the team um, in Learning Innovation and Services is there for you as well um, to make sure that, um, that they can answer all of your questions. So um, we want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you might face, um, and we'll talk about how Read and Write Gold can help you and your students, um, and we'll give you an overview of the program. We're going to talk about reading. We're going to talk about some basic research skills, and we're going to talk about some writing conventions, and then we'll make sure that you know where you can go moving forward. So your current situation, you probably have lots of students who are not reading at grade level. Um, it's very common, of course, what we call that, that grade four cliff. Um, you know, our students are making the transition from learning to read to reading to learn. Um, so the first time that you give them, uh, you know, assign a chapter and ask them to respond to it, uh, it's, a, it's a real crisis point for a lot of students in their learning. Um, writing, we have many, many students who have issues converting their thoughts to written text, whether it is, you know, based on a disability, whether they are English language learners um, and still struggling to express themselves in English. Um, there are lots and lots of students who struggle. You may have students who, you know, sit down at the computer or sit down with a piece of paper, stare off into space for 20 or 30 minutes and maybe get one or two words on the paper. We'll give you some ideas for how you can support those students. And also, I know that you have many English language learners in your schools, uh, and we'll talk about some ways that we can support what they do. Um, we'll be talking more about the Read and Write Gold toolbar, which we just see over here on the left of my screen. It is a toolbar that layers on top of everything that you already do. There is no content in the Read and Write Gold toolbar. So you'll still need to have those digital texts. If you are fortunate enough to have digital text uh, from your, your published textbooks, that's great. If not, we have lots and lots of resources for you. And again, you will get access to this list. Um, it'll be posted on the CORE website, so don't feel like you have to hurry and write all of this down. It's going to be available for you. Um, there are many resources for you. These first three with the asterisk are just for students with disabilities. Those of you who have students with disabilities in your classrooms may want to think about looking at a, um, looking at a Bookshare membership. Bookshare is a, a nonprofit organization based in the U U.S. I'm in the U.S. They're very, um, they're very near to, to me. Um, just adjacent to uh, Stanford University, and what they do is uh, they offer both textbooks, the you know the the published history book or or math book or whatever that is, um, as well as the kind of trade books that students like to read. Those you know those books they like to read for fun, like Twilight and Harry Potter, that kind of thing. Um, there were some laws that were passed in the U.S. in the 1990s that required publishers to make available to students with what they refer to as a qualified print disability, 
to make available those um, texts from the classroom. And so these are recently available in Canada. Um, the membership for these is not free, but it is very low cost um, it, since it's subsidized by a, a U.S. grant. Um, you can get all of these books for your students in a digital format. They can also have access to those books at home. So um, for those of you that are teaching students with disabilities like um, dyslexia, dysgraphia, um, maybe low vision, um, if you have students with low incidence disabilities, let's say you have a student with CP who is unable to turn the pages herself, um, those students would qualify for membership to a Bookshare. So definitely look into that if those students are in your classroom. Um, the rest of these resources are available to anyone. Um, uh, those of you who are at the middle school, high school level, um, you definitely want to check out Project Gutenberg. They make um, public domain books available. So these are all things that are older than Mickey Mouse. Um, so if you're teaching Shakespeare, if you're teaching Mark Twain, you know, classics like Dante and Aristotle, that kind of thing, those are available for you, but there's other great things um, on Project Gutenberg. When you know, we look at, at revised standards, sometimes they ask us to use source materials, and there are you know, historical source materials that you can bring into your lessons there on Gutenberg, um, and they're a quick free download. Um, I'm going to be using some examples today from some of these different texts. Um, Hot Chalk is um, full of great practice examples. We'll be looking at a, a little pre-geometry lesson from there. Um, we'll be looking at um, a website um, from C-Learn. That's a, a, about a fourth or fifth grade level textbook about energy. For those of you who are looking for this sort of traditional low-level guided reader um, type of items, this Tar Heel Readers has lots of teacher created little books, you know, with the, the, the you know, targeted phonics activity, and um, those could be really helpful for you as well. So just know you've got lots and lots of text that you can use to reinforce the strategies that you'll be using with the toolbars. So why do we need a tool like Read and Write Goal? <clears throat> well, let's take a look at this young man's work. He was in grade seven, so he's clearly not working at grade level. His mother was spending between three and four hours a night on homework with him, and this was the best that he could do independently. So clearly, he's got some, he's got some issues. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at his work and see if you notice anything. I notice, you know, in, in the beginning here, he's trying to write full sentences, but um, it looks like, he, you know, not just handwriting, but probably writing in general is, is very difficult for him. You'll start to see him, you know, the answers are getting shorter. He's starting to use this sort of text language, IDK, for I don't know. He's clearly having a difficult time. And so when we, look at, um, when we look at this, we see his writing getting bigger and larger. He is really, really frustrated. Um, so how can we help this student? Well, this is the same student after using Read and Write Goal for three months. So you probably have a lot of students like this in your class. They actually are capable of doing the work. Um, they are trying their best to engage with you, but they just can't tell you what, you, what they know. So for those of you that are familiar with the concepts of universal design for learning, um, you know, we have the multiple representations. How many ways can we show them the content? We have multiple avenues of engagement. How can we keep them tuned in, not frustrated, engaged, paying attention? But really, I think the revolutionary thing in universal design for learning is that multiple means of expression. There are lots of students who are dying to show us what they know. And here's an example of a young man who clearly was engaged with the content but couldn't express that. Um, and the tools in Read and Write Gold, the, the comprehension tools as well as the writing tools allowed him to really unlock that communication and let you know what he was doing. So this is the kind of thing that we'd like to see with your students. So how do we do this? Well, um, Read and Write Gold is a toolbar, um, and it offers lots of wonderful tools, but some of the main tools are text-to-speech, just hearing things read out loud. Um, we also have um, uh, tools that help with, um, with the comprehension and the basic reading. We have talking dictionaries, but we also have visual dictionaries. Lots of people think that 
picture dictionaries are just for very young children or they're just for students with severe disabilities and nothing could be further from the truth. They're really, really helpful in the content area at cementing those concepts um, for your English language learners. They are tremendously effective. So your students, um, in order to engage with the concept, don't have to code switch. They don't have to mentally translate back and forth from their native language to English to engage with the concept. Um, we are going to talk just a little bit about some of the organizational tools and in a later session we can work on brainstorming tools for the writing process. Um, we can support the writing process, the conventions with word prediction um, and, um, and the dictionaries and some other tools. We can also, um, we're not going to get into it today, but your um, PC users will be able to harness um, a tool native to um, Microsoft Office to actually use speech to text, the speech input tool. So they'll actually be able to speak into the computer um, and have it type what they write. So let's talk a little bit about um, what we're talking about uh, when we talk about text-to-speech. You know, having the computer speak to us was almost like science fiction not too long ago. Um, and now we all have something in our lives with text-to-speech. You may have a smartphone with Siri. Um, you may have a GPS unit um, that talks to you. So text-to-speech is really part of our everyday environment. But when we're talking about text-to-speech in an academic environment, we want to make sure that we have what's called dual highlighting. So what that means is the active word that you're hearing is lit up in one color, and either the phrase as we have here or the sentence or the paragraph is lit up in a contrasting color. Um, there's research going back to the 1990s that shows that students who have access to that dual highlighting, they're getting both the auditory and the visual support. On average, their comprehension, regardless of whether they're primary students or college students, their average comprehension um, increase is two levels. In lots of students, it can be as high as five grade levels. So that's where you start to see those dramatic changes, like you saw in that young man from, um, from grade seven. Also, the Read and Write Gold writing tools um, in a three-month study showed an increase in use, successful use of writing conventions of 276%. So that's your, your spelling and your grammar and your word choice. Those um, are greatly enhanced with the tools that we're going to show you today. So what in the world is Read and Write Gold? It's a toolbar. Um, and you can see the toolbar over here on the um, left side of my screen. It layers on top of the other things that you already do. So there's lots and lots of powerful tools, each one of these on the toolbar. Um, and our focus is to help students with reading, with writing, and with study and research skills. Now, you'll see a large toolbar here, and you'll see a large toolbar here in my margin. Um, we're going to show you how you can customize that toolbar so you can help your students really focus on just the tools that they need to be successful. So we'll talk about how you can do that. So Read and Write Gold integrates with all of the things that you do all the time. Um, so we partner with lots of technology companies so that we work well with, um, with their processes. So you can use Read and Write Gold um, to read and interact with Word documents, with PDFs, probably like what you get from your publishers. We can scan material with Read and Write Gold, um, but my goal for you is to not have to do that. That's why we gave you access to some of these great resources. Chances are you don't need to reinvent the wheel, and there probably is some great material that's already digital out there for you. We work in all the different browsers, so if you're a Mac user and use Safari, great. Um, we work with Internet Explorer, we work with Firefox, and for those of you who are using Google, we work in Google Chrome, we also read Google Docs um, and Gmail. Um, so I think some of you might have programs like Study Island or Accelerated Reader. Sometimes um, students aren't as, as able to access the documents in those, um, so we can help with that. I know that you have Blackboard, um, and we'll talk about some ways that, um, that Read and Write Gold can support your students with the materials that you have in Blackboard. Um, so let's go back to uh, kind of looking at some student work. So this is a typical um, kind of response that you might have 
to, um, to some um, middle grade guided reading. So you might be looking um, to build vocabulary. Um, those of you who are familiar with Bob Marzano, you might uh, be using a lot of these, or these techniques on a regular basis. So here uh, in this lesson, they're asking the student for the word, the definition, to put it in a sentence, and to att attach a symbol to it. And we have a wonderful vocabulary tool that I'm going to share with you today um, that helps students to do that in a really meaningful way. Let's go ahead and look at some more student work. So uh, this is a grade 6 student, also clearly not at grade level. Um, what of this work do you think that this student uh, did himself? So he's working with AIDS, um, and it, this is his response to that kind of a, an, an assignment. He needed to look up the words and the definitions. And if you guess that the student drew the pictures and the aide did the rest, you are correct. Um, so how much learning is going on here? Probably not very much. So let's go ahead and look at this same student's engagement with, um, with the tools in Read and Write Gold. So here, this student was um, taking 90 minutes to get through four words. Really all he was doing was drawing the pictures. There weren't a whole lot of gains, and he was frustrated the entire time. This is the same student um, in one 45-minute session. Um, he was highly engaged. He was assigned four words and went on to do seven words. Um, and clearly, he was activating that, that part of his brain using some of the higher order thinking. So let's take a closer look um, at what we're talking about. This is what he was assigned, um, and this was created using our vocabulary tool. So you'll see um, that he was able to really make this his own. He even went on and did extra words. Um, so we want to see this kind of thing for your students. So let's talk more about the toolbar. Um, I kind of mentioned before that I have a really large toolbar, and I don't want your students um, to be weighted down with a big toolbar. We want to really customize that for your students. So um, for the youngest students, you might just have the basic reading tools, and that's all. Um, your elementary students might get um, a few more tools. As your students progress, they may add on tools, and this can be absolutely an individual thing. Now this, um, you'll look here, um, and you can see we have a tool matcher icon there. That is going to take us, actually, to our um, website, um, and we have access for you to this wonderful tool matcher tool. Um, and I want you to see this on our website. Um, the Tool Matcher tool here, um, it's just toolmatcher.com, and you'll have access to this link as well. Um, but these are the kind of accommodations that you might typically see with your inclusive ed students in, um, in an IPP. So let's say that we have a student who needs access to a dictionary and pictures and spell check, and text-to-speech. We would click this button here to see how we can help. And it's going to give me a nice, concise list of the things that that student would use. Okay? There's a button here where we can download this to, um, to Microsoft Word. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up a document um, that we've actually already done for your student. So let's just go ahead and take a look rather than waiting to download. Here is, um, we would get a wonderful uh, list here, um, and we would have the tool and the accommodations address, and we have another, um, another column here. I went ahead and um, just right-click to insert additional columns, and I thought what might be helpful for your student is to look at when they would use this. So, you can set this up in whatever way that you think um, is, is most helpful for your students and their parents. But um, you know, we let the student know that they might use Screenshot Reader to read text out loud even when it's not accessible, and when should they use it on their accelerated reader quiz and on websites with lots of charts. Um, so PDFs are talking books, so read PDF books out loud so I can pay attention and understand them better. When do I use it? I use it with my science book, this kind of thing. And so you could create, this is a Word document, it's a living document, you can edit it and do whatever you like. You could create something like this for your students who need help using these tools. You could share this with the parents, and this could be a great avenue of communication for you um, with those parents. 
So, um, so let's go back and talk a little bit more about, um, about that toolbar. So remember, we may want to um, customize this for the different students. So how do we do that? Um, let's go ahead and we're going to actually go into, um, into the software. Um, but before we do that, I want to just give you a quick um, reinforcement. The program that you're, uh, we're talking about today is Read and Write Goal. And this is what CVE has made available for you. This is our desktop program. It's installed on a PC or a Mac, um, and your parents will have access to this on their computers at home. Um, for students who use an iPad, um, we do have an iPad app that focuses really pretty much on the reading, and we have some cloud solutions. Um, there's really two things right now in the cloud. We have a program called Read and Write for Google that works entirely in the Google Drive. Um, and then we have um, some web apps that are um, available to you through CVE if you want them. Um, the students that might make use of the web apps would be the ones with the iPad. There's a little toolbar that will pop up for them on the iPad. So the program we're talking about today, the Read and Write Gold desktop program is not on the iPad, but we do have options for you there. Um, and just to let you know, I am um, working with you today. Um, on a MacBook, but I am showing you Read and Write Gold version 11 for PC. So I am on a MacBook with a program called Boot Camp um, that emulates a PC so that I can use one computer as both Mac and PC. Um, so I'm showing you the PC version today. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to unlink that toolbar. Okay, And you can see I can bring it over here and I can move it over there to the left. Um, I can bring it over here to the right. I cannot dock it on the bottom. Our friend Bill Gates kind of wants to own that real estate on the bottom. So the things that I'm showing you today um, work the same on both the Mac and the PC. Um, if any of you are Mac users, I'll just point out, um, you know, there's some differences in the user interface between Mac and PC. And I think, you know, one of the big differences is that things on Macs in general are kind of floatier. So you don't dock the toolbar um, on a Mac the way that you would on a PC. Um, but we will be able to do that um, here with our PC. So I'm going to go ahead and dock the toolbar up on top. Um, and before we get into the reading, I just want to talk a little bit about the toolbar. So um, you saw that I docked and undocked it by clicking that anchor. So here's the, the anchor up here. Um, this toolbar is very large. And it's large because it's my job to show you lots of things about Read and Write Gold. Um, we would not normally give a student a toolbar this extensive, so we might want to customize it. There's a couple of ways that we can change the toolbar. So you'll notice as I hover over here, um, it says My Features. When I click the Text Hub icon, that purple box, you'll see I can have just the study skills, everything. And when I say everything, this is big. Look at all the tools on here. Um, just the reading features, just the writing features, just the research features. And then we're back to My Features. So how can we change My Features? You'll notice every one of the items on the toolbar has a little white drop-down menu next to it. I'm going to go ahead and pull the drop-down menu for the toolbar. And every one of those menus has a video tour for you. These are two to five minute videos. Many of your students are going to train themselves just using the videos. We know lots of students just jump right into technology, so know that that's there. But I'm going to go to the general options and start working on my toolbar. So I get this pop-up box um, on general options. And I want you to look up here at the, these icons. These are the homophone checker, the sounds like, the confusables, OK? And um, I'm not sure how well you can see this on the webinar. It's relatively small. But these are supposed to be a little man holding his hand up to his ear, kind of say, what? Um, so I'm going to remove my homophone checkers to limit my toolbar. So if you look here in my list, I can scroll down, and you can see some things have items checked next to them, and some do not. I'm going to remove the homophone checkers. So I want you to look up here as I uncheck. So one man went away, two men go away, three men go away. And when I want to add them back into my toolbar, I just click one two, three, and my homophone checkers are back. So it's that simple to change what's on your toolbar. You can also change the appearance of the toolbar. 
So I like this set as small icons without text, again, because I use a large toolbar every day. Um, so you'll notice there's no text printed on the toolbar, but if I hover over the item, it will tell you what that item is. So I like that the best, but you may have um, younger students who have um, really small toolbars, then maybe the large icons are the way to go. Um, you can have them with or without the text. Um, but you can see even, um, you know, with the text, there's a lot more that's not going to show on the toolbar. So you want to kind of take that into account. Um, I'm going to go back to the toolbar the way that I like it. Um, now, version 11 for PC, we're Windows certified. So we work closely with Microsoft, and that means that we do work with Windows 8. Um, so for your parents at home that have Windows 8, for those of you that have Windows 8 on your personal computers, um, if you're used to that Windows 8 uh, version, I have the toolbar set right now at Professional. So for um, some of the teachers that have been using Read and Write Gold for a long time, Professional is sort of the historic view what uh, Read and Write Gold has always looked like. Um, but for Windows 8 users, if you want this to look and feel like Windows 8, um, those of you who know, played with Windows 8 know that the icons are very bold. They're much more iconic um, in Windows 8. Um, and then also, if any of you are familiar with the tiles and all the different uh, things in Windows 8, you can change the colors and, you know, customize Windows 8 to how you want it to look. Um, so some people like to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take it back to blue. And I am also going to take it back to the professional style. Okay. So lots of ways you can change the toolbar, and the way that you do that is with that little toolbar icon right there. So um, with no further ado, I am going to actually start into the reading. So let's look at reading a Word document. So I'm going to bring up just a basic Word document here. And I want you to, um, to see that I have not done anything. I have not scanned. This is just a Word document that I opened up, and you guys have access to this as well. I'm just going to put my cursor inside the document and press the play button. Readers and writers of all ages and abilities use Read and Write Gold's flexible set of support. So I want you to see, I'm going to pause this. So it's just like a DVR. Just, you know, press the stop and go buttons, the rewind and play buttons. Um, I want you to see the dual highlighted. So you can see features is lit up here, um, and then the sentence is lit up in a different color. And if this wasn't entirely in sync for you, it's, it's because of the delay on the GoToMeeting session. But on my desktop, it's perfectly in sync, and it will be when you use it as well. <clears throat> so, um, so remember that we have that dual text highlighting. So I'm going to stop this here, and I'm going to start on another sentence so you can see what that looks like. This is a document which I tipped this Saturday. There are a few mistakes in it. Wow! What's that about? Well, remember, it's great to hear your text read out loud so that you can help understand your reading. It's also great to hear your text read out loud when you write it yourself. Um, you know, our students probably know there's some mistakes in there because of the red lines that Microsoft Office put in there. Um, but it's really different to hear mistakes than to see that red line that you don't know why. Um, so just know that that um, text-to-speech is going to support our students in reading and comprehension, but it's also going to support them in understanding their own writing. Okay, um, so it's very very simple um, to read. Just pretty much press the play button, and like everything else in Read and Write Gold, it's customizable. So if there's anything that I want you to take away from today's session, Read and Write Gold is going to be customized to the way that you teach and can be customized to the way that your students learn. So maybe we don't want to hear it read like that. Maybe we want to change something. So again, we're going to go down to that drop down menu and we're going to choose Speech Options. And here's where we choose our voice. So right now, we're listening to Allison. This is your new voice. Is it OK? Um, but we can choose from different voices. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to choose Tom. This is your new voice. Is it OK? Now, there's nothing wrong with Tom's voice. He sounds fine. But my personal learning style, for some reason, like a deeper voice, a male voice, if I were listening to something, say, on headphones in a library where there's a lot of activity around me, it's like Swiss cheese. It goes in one ear and out the other, and I just don't comprehend it. So just for me personally, if I raise the pitch, I comprehend it better. This is your new voice. 
Is it okay? This may not be aesthetically pleasing to everybody, but it's very functional for me educationally. So you may have students who discover little things like this about their learning style where they can change it. Another instance where you might change the pitch, especially with the female voices, if you're working with really young students um, and you raise the pitch, it takes a, an adult voice and kind of makes it sound like a child's voice. So that can be nice. You can change the speed. Some of your students with visual disabilities are used to listening to, um, you know, books on tape and, and recorded text a lot, and they take in audio information very quickly, so they may like it very quick. This is your new voice. Is it okay? Um, you can slow down the text, but if you slow it down too much here, you're going to get Charlie Brown's parents. This is your new voice. Is it okay? What you want is, um, let's say you have, uh, oh, I don't know, a, a physics textbook that's really challenging for you, and you want to put a pause in between the words, you can put a very long pause, and it'll still keep that voice quality. This is your new voice. Is it okay? All right, so you can change lots of things about your voice. Um, you can also change the voice. Now, remember, we had a few voices here, but you actually have access to quite a few more voices. Um, so if I click that search button, you'll see these are all of the voices that are installed on my computer. So I went out to Microsoft and downloaded some of these um, voice, free voices from Microsoft. Um, when you install Read and Write Gold, or when your parents install Read and Write Gold, the basic installation includes just a small group of voices. And we do that in case you have people who have an older computer without a lot of memory so that we're not making too big of a footprint on the computer. But we have a whole suite of voices available for you. Um, and you will notice there are lots of international voices here. So I'm not planning on reading in Portuguese anytime soon, so I don't have a check mark next to Felipe, and he won't show up in the main menu. However, I have a lot of students um, uh, who really like Lee. Um, he's very popular at Grant McEwen. Um, so um, you'll see um, you'll see the most popular voices or the voices that I tend to use the most have the check mark. So when we go back here to my list, these are the ones where I put the check mark. You'll notice we do have um, some French Canadian voices. So we've got Amelie and Nicholas. I'm based in California. Um, so we down here use um, Paulina for Mexican Spanish on a regular basis. So you'll just want to put those voices there on the top. Some of your students, as they first learn to use the program, they'll have a lot of fun playing with the voices. Give them a couple sessions to play with it because they will find something that suits them. So you might want to, you know, let them play with that at home, give them some structured time to do that. So um, that's how you change the voices. Um, and let's take the word pause off and make sure we like the way Allison sounds here. This is your new voice. Yes, we is do. Is it okay? Okay. Um, and so we can change the voice. And remember, we had that dual highlighting. So let's go ahead and look at some of the ways that we can change the visual um, on our text-to-speech. So in the, in the uh, kind of out of the box, you're going to get the yellow and blue highlighting. You may have students who have been diagnosed with the scotopic sensitivity and they've uh, been given those um, color filters to support their reading. So if they need to read using specific colors, um, we have a range of those that you can choose from. Um, so there's lots of options there, but I'm just going to take it back to the standard yellow and blue. Also, you may have students who either have um, issues with attention, or you have maybe students on the spectrum, or you may have uh, students either with low vision or um, physical issues that make it difficult for them to use left to right sweep and track back and forth across the page, those students may do well by using the one word display. So instead of having read and write gold sort of track along over the words as you read them, it actually puts each, uh, each word as it goes by in a big window. And uh, for students who use this, you would want to put this at the highest possible font. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that feels like. I'm just going to press the play button. Readers and writers of all ages and abilities use Read and Write Gold's flexible set of support features directly within the programs they use every day. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change that back. And again, go to the play button, go to speech options, go to highlights, and I'm just going to turn it back to speak with highlighting in the document. All right, 
So that's the basics of reading. Just click in the document. Readers and writers of all ages and abilities. And press play. Now, how do we read documents that aren't in English? Um, I have a couple of examples for you here. So here is a document in French. Um, and I'm going to go here. And all I have to do is to just pick a French voice. So here's Amelie. Um, and you'll notice when Amelie reads, I'll start this at the top so you'll just see, you'll notice when Amelie reads in French, she sounds great because she's designed to read in French. And when she reads the lesson title in English, she's going to have an accent. So, um, so let's go ahead and click here. Lucie en France, elle arrive. French reading compréhension. Lucie, étudiante des États-Unis. So I didn't do anything here. This is just a Word doc. This is something that I pulled from a website um, and just copied and pasted it into a Word doc. A uh, nice little kind of introductory lesson. Let's look at um, speaking in Spanish. Okay. Um, so I pulled this from uh, Univision. So for those of you that have um, ESL students, um, if there's some reason that you might want to find something in their native language, um, almost every language group has like a preferred news source either from the native country or um, sometimes there's an international one. Um, so if I want to hear news in Spanish, then what I would be able to do is just pick my Spanish voice. So I'm going to choose Paulina and I'm going to pick here. Reforma sortea enmienda venenosa en el Senado. 61313. Exigía que antes de abrir... So you get the idea. So the same, the same thing is going to work for you on a website. Okay? Um, so we'll show you in a little bit how to read websites. Um, but it's very, very simple for you to, um, to be able to just grab a Word doc and read that. Oh, and I left... Paulina speaking, so we, we don't want to do that. Let's take it back to an English voice. I'm going to go back to Allison. Um, and so it's that simple. Readers and writers of all ages. So very, very simple. So now um, we've talked about, you know, changing the voices and kind of customizing our reading preference. It's very, very simple to read our Word docs. Let's look at some of the tools that we have um, to support us. Let's go ahead and take the word support. And we're going to use our dictionary. We're just going to click on the dictionary, and I can move this over so you can see it. Um, and I can choose a word like support and press play. One, the activity of providing for or maintaining by supplying with money or necessities. His support kept the family together. They okay, so pretty simple. Um, this is advanced definitions, and I would suggest that you keep to advanced definitions. Any of you that are fourth grade and over, there is a lower level dictionary, um, but the advanced definitions are pretty helpful. Um, so that's the default, um, but you can go down to a lower level if you'd like. So when we look at the, um, the dictionary, we also have a picture dictionary. So let's try and pick something like, uh, okay, I'll take a word like problems, and I'll highlight that, and I'll go to the picture dictionary. And you'll see my picture is going to pop up here. Um, and so these are, um, you know, good for general vocabulary, but they're very good for words in the content area. So if we look up a word like uh, rectangle um, in our dictionary, so you'll see. Um, we'll get an example there. So, um, so just know that those are available for your students, and those can be really helpful as well. All right, so we've read a Word document. Let's go ahead and move on to PDFs. If you're getting documents from your um, textbook publishers, they're probably in PDF format. There's two ways to read a PDF. One is that you would click on this PDF Allowed button, and I know that's very small on the webinar, but um, that icon is supposed to be a little globe with a face on it, all right? But interestingly, once you have PDF Allowed and, um, and uh, Read and Write Gold installed on your computer, Every time you open up a PDF, you will have access to PDF Allowed. So there's really no need to even press that button. You just open your PDF as you normally would. So I'm going to go ahead and close this so you can see what it would look like when it first opens. Chances are that, um, that you won't see the PDF Allowed toolbar, and you need to go to the Extended button, um, and then you'll see your PDF Allowed toolbar. I like to use Click and Speak. 
Um, and I can just, you can see the, the little hand there, I just click wherever I want it to read. Commonly used anticoagulant rodenticides, however, can take a terrible... And if I want to skip down here... Trapping should be undertaken with care. Traps should never be set where children... So I haven't scanned anything, I haven't done anything. Um, this is one of the documents that we gave you access to. Um, this is a really hot issue in my area. We just passed some legislation to make sure that the, um, the California condors don't eat lead ammunition and, and poisoned animals. So um, kind of topical for us here, um, but this is um, really simple. I just downloaded this from a website. I didn't scan anything. I didn't change anything. And I'm just able to click and speak, and off I go reading a PDF document. So I think the bulk of, of, of yeah, documents that you'll have on your desktop um, will probably be either these PDFs or Word documents, especially if you're creating documents with your students, you're probably creating Word docs. But we probably have a lot of reason to read online. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Microsoft Explorer and let's look at how we would read online. And remember, we can read online using all the different uh, browsers, um, so there's not really anything special that we need to do there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to take my cursor and I'm going to highlight the part that I want to read and press the play button. Fossil fuels are fuels formed by natural processes such. Coal reserves are located all over the world. Ah, and we're also Electric reading a, uh, we're also reading another website uh, that I had my cursor on. So just so you know, that that's something that we can do. But, um, but we can click here to read the part that we want to read. The Energy Information Administration estimates. Okay. Um, so very simple. We can go to another website and you can see it's, it's easy here. There are three major forms of fossil fuels coal, oil, and natural gas. All right, so pretty simple to read. Um, and uh, this is from that C-Learn um, produced by the state of California. So there's some nice free textbooks that you can use there. Um, but I'm going to go back to Wikipedia. So pretty simple to read. We can change our voice if this is a Spanish language website and we want to use a Spanish language material. We can do that as well. Um, we can also take materials on that website and we can translate them. We can do the same thing in our Word doc with our translate button. So let me take a little phrase like this and I'm going to translate it. Uh, you do have to be online to translate. Um, and you can see um, it's going to translate for me. And in this case, in Spanish, if you have a voice to read this, it'll give you a button so you can hear it right out loud. Van desde los materiales volátiles con bajas emisiones de carbono, radios e hidrógeno. Okay, so we can do that in Spanish, but for those of you that have, um, you know, students who come from languages other than English, even if you don't have all those um, languages installed on your computer, take a look here. We can translate, we can read um, in different languages, but we can also translate in different languages, 60 languages. So just because you do not have a Thai textbook in your classroom, if you're using online materials or Word documents, you can take that material and translate it. Okay, so let's pick up something here that we want to um, translate. And there it is in Thai. Now, I don't have a Thai voice installed on my computer, so it can't read this. But for your students to be able to translate to their native language can be huge. So um, especially those of you that are in the upper grades, um, you know, middle school and high school. Your kids may be literate in their native language, but um, just need a little extra support for concepts in English. So just know that sky's the limit. You can do anything you want with that translator, OK? So, um, we're reading online content, we're translating online content, but sometimes you are going to encounter content online um, and other places that is not accessible. So let me give you an example of that. Um, this particular, you saw that we could read the stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and go down here to this lesson because I know there's some inaccessible content in it. So you can see when I want to read, I can just scroll over here and press play. The products include gasoline, diesel. But I want you to see what happens when I try to select this text. You're going to get like a no-no symbol. It's not going to do it for you. Why is it doing that? This is inaccessible text. Um, this is a great example, and this may come up. I know that you folks use Blackboard. This may be something that will happen to you um, using Blackboard to create lessons. Um, 
a lot of times when you use a program to create lessons, maybe you're creating a, a graph or a chart like this, and a little pop-up pop window will come up and it'll say, hey, do you want to use this template? It's going to be pretty. You're going to get fonts and colors and all these neat things, and you say, oh, yeah, this will make my lesson a lot more engaging. Great, let's go. And unfortunately, when you use those templates, those different things, um, the computer basically takes a picture of what you've done to include that template. Um, and so as far as our computer is concerned here, this can be a picture of the ocean. It doesn't understand that we want to read it. Um, another time that this kind of thing might come up is um, using a program like Accelerated Reader or uh, Study Island or um, maybe you have some you know, publishers' websites that you use to take quizzes. Um, this is a quiz we use here in the U.S. called the MAP Test. Um, it's locked down, so you may not be able to read the item there. Um, but you can actually access um, that text. So let's go ahead and, um, and look at some ways that you can access that text. You'd use the screenshot reader here. And um, remember, we've got those little videos that you can see, but rather than waiting for that video to load, I've already set it up for you. So let's just take a quick peek at the screenshot reader so you can see how you're going to be able to lasso any of that inaccessible text and have it read for you. This is a picture with text in it. To use the screenshot reader, click on the screenshot reader icon. Select the area you would like to read by using the left click of the mouse and drawing a box around the text you wish to be read. The text is read to you. Ancient Greeks and Romans believe that the volcanoes were under the control of gods. How else to explain the fiery spectacles that occurred without warning and with such destruction? If you wish the text read again, click here. Ancient Greeks and Romans believe that the volcanoes were under the control of gods. To close the box, click here. So it's that simple um, to use the screenshot reader. Um, so just know that you can use that for websites. You can also use that for documents that you might have that are inaccessible. So if you get something from the publishers or you have something from Blackboard that, um, that's not as accessible as you would like, um, you can definitely use those. So, um, so just to recap, we talked about customizing your toolbar. We talked about how to customize the voices, how to choose different language voices. We talked about reading Word docs, just put your cursor in there, hit play, and off you go. Um, we talked about reading PDF docs. We can use that PDF allowed button, or we can just open the PDF doc and bring up the, um, the PDF allowed toolbar on the right by clicking extended. Um, we've talked about reading online contents, um, and we talked about translation and the screenshot reader. So let's go ahead and talk about using some of your research tools. Um, and our research tools are more kind of situated over here on the right-hand side of the menu. So we want to use those um, to take notes in Word. Um, and let's go ahead. I'm going to bring up a Word document for you. Um, and let's just take a peek. Um, this is a document that you'll have access to. It's called Military Power. Um, and this is, again, something I think I found this on Discovery Education. And I just cut and pasted it into a Word doc. I just, you know, selected it all and highlighted it, dropped it in a Word doc. And I chose this because it's pretty obvious what our literacy skill is here. This is one of the more cut and dry compare and contrast lessons I've seen lately. Um, and we're going to use our highlighters to comprehend and respond to the text. Um, so the way that we want to do that is to, to look at these highlighters up top here. Um, so we can highlight um, portions of the text. Um, and the way that you use these highlighters is entirely up to you. But in the case of this particular um, lesson, since it's compare and contrast, I thought it would be a good idea to highlight anything that has to do with military power in pink or red, and anything that has to do with economic power in green. And I'm not going to do the whole thing, but we'll look at uh, something here. So we're going to say military power is paramount, so we'll make that pink, and economic power is a luxury. And we'll say 
economic power is, okay, so we'll do capital, technology, geographic position. So that's a lot. I'm going to go ahead and say um, here's economic power. We'll just say it's the industrial base, all that good stuff. Military power is uh, includes number of divisions, armaments, organization, training, equipment, all this good stuff. We'll make that red. Um, and we'll say here, Russia, India, and China will sell to anybody. So we'll make that there. We'll make that red. Um, so you'll see, you know, some of the things that we'll look at. And I thought this was interesting. Um, as a teacher, you'll, you'll get a feel for how to assign these highlighters. As I was working on this lesson, I actually started seeing all this stuff about the Cold War. Um, and I realized that, you know, when you're talking about the Cold War, you're really talking about economic power and military power kind of being more or less in balance. So I decided I'd assign a third color and say anything that was about the Cold War would then be yellow. Um, so you can do, you know, whatever you like with these. But once you've um, kind of highlighted your text, you're going to go here to the Collect Highlights button, and you're going to click Collect Highlights. And in my case, I want to order these by color so that I have all the military things together and all the economic things together and all the Cold War things together. I don't need to uncheck blue because I didn't make any blue highlights. Um, and I want each one of these to be on a separate line. Um, and I'm not sure what bibliography, for, bibliography format you use in CBE, um, but you have a choice of um, how you want to set up your bibliography information. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with MLA. Um, and it's not going to write the bibliography, but it's going to give you the information that you need to write the bibliography. I'm going to press OK. And you can see it's looking at all of my Word documents that I have open. I'm just going to take a second here. Um, and after I've done that, holy cow, look what I get. I get um, my Cold War stuff, I get my economic stuff, and I get my military power stuff here. So there's lots of things you could do after analyzing this. You could, um, before just telling your students to write about it, uh, you could set this up in charts, and you could have students discuss, you know, what they pulled out, and, um, and uh, you could create a three-column chart here if you wanted to. So whatever you want to do, um, that is available for you. Um, so that's how you would use the highlighters in a, um, in a uh, Word doc. Um, and before we go on, I want to talk a little bit more about how you might use those highlighters. So you have access to this document as well. Once you start using the highlighters, you'll get ideas for the best ways to use them. So I'm going to show you in a moment how to use the highlighters online. Um, so one of the ways that I like to use, uh, there's a very popular writing program called Step Up to Writing. Um, and it uses a um, stoplight as a graphic organizer when they're talking about note taking. So main ideas are green, go, go, go. Those are good. Details are yellow. You want to slow down and think about those. And then depending on the grade level, they call it either evidence or examples are red. So in this case, I'll make them pink. Um, those of you who work with students with learning disabilities, you know that um, a lot of our students want to highlight everything on the page when they take notes, right? And then their notes are worthless. It's just the same as the, the document. Um, and our, some of our students with dis learning disabilities are, I, I call them kind of shiny objects. They're very attracted to random factoids. So they want to, um, you know, pull out sort of random statistics and big interesting looking words that might not even be pertinent um, to to the lesson um, so um, so those random factoids those are going to be red so you want to slow down on those um, uh, for those of you teaching literature you could use these colors to be character plot and setting um, I had a young man um, in high school who was really struggling his teacher assigned him to read for the themes of love fate and violence in Romeo and Juliet um, so you've got all kinds of options there. One of the, you can use this for the content area. So if this is science, it could be hypothesis and conclusion. Um, you could do before, during, and after. Those of you working with younger students, you might just want to have your students, you know, highlight the subject in one color, the object in another, or the verb and the adjective, or you know, parts of speech. However, you want to use those. So once you get used to using these highlighters. 
um, you will find just myriad ways uh, to use them. I want to go ahead and return to our websites on Microsoft Explorer. So one, uh, one note, um, if you are planning on using these highlighters to take notes, you do need to use Microsoft Explorer to export them to a Word doc. That's our friends at Microsoft. They want you in their Microsoft world. Um, so if we're going to do this to take notes, we need to be in Microsoft Explorer. Um, so let's look at our highlights here. Um, so we're using that main idea and details concept, okay? So I'm going to highlight um, some, some of the things that I think are main ideas here in Wikipedia. I'm going to say fossil fuels are formed by anaerobic decomposition, okay? Uh, that's a big idea. Um, fossil fuels are a renewable resource. Okay, that's an interesting idea. I'm not sure what I think about that. Um, and then we have here the energy information. This is that kind of random factoid. This is not going to help us write a good paper. Um, so when you're thinking about maybe bringing this together for a research paper, you could tell your students who tend to overemphasize these details, you know, hey, if it's a one-page paper, you get to pick one red fact. If it's a five-page paper, maybe you get to have three red facts, because any more than that, you're going to be off topic. So we've picked some main ideas here. Let's go to, so this is Wikipedia. It's kind of an information dump. We don't really know the source. Um, this is fairly balanced, um, since this is a textbook. So I'm going to say there's three, here's a big idea, three full uh, types of fossil fuels. So we'll go ahead and highlight that in green. Um, here's kind of a, a good idea. Some deposits of coal are found during the time of the dinosaurs. We're going to make that yellow. And here's that random factoid. We probably don't need to know about the Carboniferous period, so I'm going to make that red. So we've had Wikipedia, we've had Energy Story, and now we're going to go here to the American Petroleum Institute. So obviously they have a particular point of view. Um, and they're going to tell us coal is an abundant fossil resource. So we're going to make that a big idea. Um, it's recovered from the earth by surface mining or deep mining. So we're going to make that yellow. Um, and then this is kind of a random factoid, but it's kind of interesting. Um, if I was going to pick one that I was going to include, I think this idea about synthetic fuels might be kind of interesting. So what happens when we click the Collect Highlights button now? It is going to bring these together for us in a new Word document. And again, you'll see it's going through all of those Word documents. Oh, I didn't clear my cache before. So we also got the items from the, the energy, but we could take those out if we wanted to. So you can see here we've got the, you know, these random factoids here, and it tells us where we got these, these items as well. Okay. Um, so we'll be able to, um, to do some great work um, with, um, with doing that highlighting to take notes. Um, so remember, we've talked about using the highlighters in Word. We've talked about using them online in Internet Explorer. Um, so how else can we use those highlighters? We talked a little bit about the picture dictionary, and then we also talked about the, um, the picture dictionary, and we talked about um, the dictionary. We didn't really talk about the vocabulary tool. So what's that about? So this is um, from Hot Talk. This is a little sort of pre-geometry lesson about perimeter. Obviously, it's nice to hear that text read out loud. The perimeter of a polygon is the distance around. And sometimes it might be nice to hear it read out loud really slowly if we're struggling with it. But we need to really uh, take, uh, take command of those concepts. So I've already highlighted a few of these in green. It does not matter what color that you use. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select perimeter, polygon, length. I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to select width. So these are concepts that it might be important for me to know to do this geometry work. And I'm going to go up here to my vocabulary button. It looks like a little list. I'm going to press vocabulary. And it's going to make a vocabulary list for me with those words. And there's some other words that I might need to know to understand this. So I'm going to, I'm going to enter the word angle. Um, because I probably need to know what an angle is to do this, um, and add that. Um, and then I can call this, I'm going to call it geometry, 
I gotta spell it, geometry. And I want to make sure I tick include images. Remember, we got that picture dictionary. I'm going to click OK. And here's my vocabulary list. How great is this? Okay, so these are developmentally appropriate ways for your students to engage with these concepts. And this is a Word document. So what can I do? I can change this to a landscape format so I have a little bit more room. I can add some extra columns here again. I'm going to insert a column to the right. So um, we've got the meaning. Maybe we want to use it in a sentence. Maybe we want to translate it to our native language. So let's go ahead and pick this up. Hit translate. And there's my definition in Thai. I'm just going to copy and paste that. I'm hitting uh, control C and I'm going back here and I'm putting it here. So I'm going to say in my language. So this might be something that you might do with your ESL students. Um, I can find an example of it in the textbook. If you want to do that kind of metacognition, you could say um, uh, find example. Um, so you could say, you know, page 44. Um, so whatever you want to do, um, We've already assigned an image for that. Um, there's lots of things we can do to extend comprehension. Um, uh, we can talk more at another time about having the students actually select their own image, which really cements that. Um, but how useful is this as a study guide, right? So um, for those of you whose students are in middle school and high school in the content areas, you know, we're moving towards all teachers being reading teachers. Our students struggle to comprehend the text, and we need to, to help them. This is a way our content area teachers can really help our students with the reading part without really changing the tenor of what they, what they do on a daily basis. So um, just know these are great study hints. I've seen these used extensively in higher education. Um, nursing students love this. <laughs> So um, they can create notes. They can be using, um, you know, as they uh, go around on their rounds to uh, to learn their uh, their terms. Um, so just know that vocabulary is just we just scratch the surface of that vocabulary, um, but it's really a great tool for you. Let's talk about writing. Okay, so let's just um, kind of review again. Um, what we were talking about. So um, we use the highlighters to take notes in Word. We use them to take notes online. Um, and we kind of glanced over the vocabulary and study list, so you'll be able to use those. You've got access to that document that showed you some ideas for ways to use those highlighters. So as you jump in and use those more, I think that you'll find that those are really helpful. So today we just have time to talk about writing conventions. There's other great tools on here to support you in the writing process. Um, but today we just have time to look at the conventions. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to open up a brand new Word document. Um, and let's talk about um, some different ways that we can support students in writing. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to use my play button, my reading button, and I'm going to choose speak as I type. So for some of your students, just hearing what they, they're, they're writing read back to them can be really helpful. So I... Capital I can... Here, what, capital M, try to write. I can hear what I am trying to write. Sometimes this helps me. It is HRD, WHNI, NT, WRT. It what? is H-R-D-W-H-N-I-N-T-W-R-T conventionally. If I don't write conventionally, this is not the tool for me. It's going to come out, it's going to be just too much cognitive load. It's going to come out really funny. So for our students that, you know, that struggle with attention, our students that just, you know, need a little boost in the writing process, that speak as I type can be really helpful. Um, remember, we can also go back to read what we've written later. Um, but for our students that, that don't write conventionally, this is probably not the best way for them. So I think the first tool that I would bring to the fore for my students that 
that don't write um, conventionally is word prediction. So let's talk about that. We're going to click the little crystal ball um, and we're going to use word prediction to help us write. Now we had mentioned those students who sit in front of a black, blank piece of paper or a blank computer screen and 20 minutes later there's still nothing there. Phonetic spell checker is for them. Some of you may be familiar with the concept of errorless writing. So in order to get students started writing, just creating sentences at all, getting the confidence that they can create sentences, and for our younger students, even understanding that the words in the sentence convey meaning um, is very important. So let's see what happens if we use uh, the, um, the word prediction. I'm going to say I. Capital I. And I've got my. Can. I've got my word prediction set up so that if Can't, I couldn't come hover over each word, it's going to read that word aloud. You can see there's Call. a dictionary next to it. But let's let's just see what happens. I mean, if I and I click think. it can. and it I can about think what about it the way the um st st story isn't story what was we. Aw, oh, we read, 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 and understand writing, wrote, writing, write, about, write, about, how, how, I, Unreas unawares. Unre understand. Oh, all right. Click too fast. Understand. Here. But how I understand it, right? So see I how much think easier about that the was. Story we read and write about how I understand. So um, so word prediction can be a huge help for those students. All right. So let's talk also about how word prediction helps our students who aren't conventional spellers. So to the 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 animals animal animals like like to eat. So is that the right word? I can look it up here. And yeah, eat. 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 Sausage. Okay. Sausage. So I don't have to be a conventional speller to take advantage of that word prediction. It's very smart. So if there are patterns of words that I use all the time. I. Went. Into. To. To. The. To. The. the other grab up right up down of the of the world class and right. class so <coughs> it's looking for those commonly used patterns okay so that's one way that you can help your students with the basics of writing just starting to get something down on the paper um, but let's talk about how they're going to um, renew their writing. Um, one other little thing I wanted to point out was this little ear here um, is telling you this is a homonym. Okay, so to or um, in could be easily confused with another word. So just so you know, these are there for your students to help them kind of get things on paper. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to return to a document that needs some editing. All right, so here's that piece before, and you'll remember when we read it out loud. This is a document which I took to Saturday. There are a few mistakes. So just hearing it read out loud told us that there were some mistakes, um, but Microsoft also told us there were some mistakes, right? Um, so let's look at how we can use um, those tools. So when we look at, um, at Microsoft Office, they 
given us some little red lines underneath telling us that there's some issues. So if I want to use the spell check in Microsoft Office, um, I'm going to go to review here and bring up the spell check. Um, many of you may have seen your students do this. They know there's something wrong because there's a red line under it. They know they probably shouldn't turn in something that has a red line under it. How often do they just pick the first thing that they see in the suggestion? So let's go ahead and see what Microsoft is going to suggest for us. So we're looking at the spelling. Okay, so it came up with school. That's a good choice. Um, it came up with with, wife, woof, it's not coming up with with. Physics, it's just looking for words that start with F. It is not going to find physics for us. General, it did come up with. Uh, knowledge, it's just looking for words that start with um, N. So not going to necessarily help us here, right? So what we need is a phonetic spell checker. So let's go ahead and take the same sentence and open up this phonetic spell check. Um, it's going to just take a second for it to load. Um, and we'll see it brings up school, but it also gives us the definition. So if we need to hear that. School, the people, such as teachers and students. So we're going to say, yeah, OK, school. That's what I need. Um, and there's with right at the top of the, uh, the file. So we're going to go ahead and change with. Physics, look at that. It picked up physics. now. This is not an accident that it picked up physics. It, it is a phonetic spell checker. It knows that people commonly confuse P, H, and F. But it also is smart. It knows that I've made this mistake before because I've shown this example before. So physics went right to the top of the list. So if you have students that commonly misspell, transpose, confuse different sounds, it's smart. It's going to learn from them as they go. Um, and it's going to actually make those changes. So I'm going to choose physics. Um, generally, actually, I want general um, knowledge right up there. Okay. Spell check completed. So very simple. It's going to really pick up a lot of those issues. So rather than just changing to another word, they're actually going to get the correct word that they need. So that's one thing with the conventions. The other thing is a lot of our students have issues with homophones or confusable words. So, you know, homophones like to and there and your, um, frankly, not just our students. I think a lot of people have issues with that. So when you want to attend to those, you want to use the homophone checker. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these up here, and I'm going to click the little first little man, and it's going to highlight in blue any of the words that are just likely to be confused. So here's, um, here's my words, and then if I want to review them, I go in here, and I can move this over here so it's not in the way, and I can review those. So I can say, you know, do, and I can hear the definition, is this water vapor? Water that has condensed on a no, surface from water vapor it, on a winter's morning. Is it past due, something that's owed? No. Okay, so that one's right. So I'm going to ignore that one. You, uh, a female sheep, a tree. No, I think I want this to be the person. So, um, so you can, you know, scroll through here, and you'll see that it will find things that I wouldn't even think of. Um, so the and the and in. It also not just homophones, but confusable words like thorough and through difference and deference, affect and effect. So this is a great tool. I do have a lot of teachers who have all of their students use this before they turn in their paper as part of the writing process. That's just a nice way uh, to make sure that your, your students are getting what they need. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of review um, some of the supports that we've had for writing. So we talked about using speak as I type. This is a great jumping off point. It's not for everybody. For your students that are not conventional writers, I would uh, really strongly suggest starting with word prediction. Um, and then once you've got some content on the paper, you can start using that phonetic spell checker and the homonym checker. So we talked about the basics of reading. We talked about the basics of research. And we talked about the basics of writing. So what's next? Um, if you still need help getting Read and Write Gold installed, please contact your school principal. They can help with that. They can also help your parents uh, make sure that they get that involved. Um, we saw the tool matcher. 
Um, so that's toolmetro.com, and you will get a link to that. Um, and that will help you to create some parent support documents so that you can really have a link to that homework help and know that your parents are going to be able to target the same things that you're working on in the classroom. We're going to be posting um, this video. Um, we'll have some additional webinars, additional resources coming up. You can practice through the onboard videos, um, and you can also go to our website. Another thing that I wanted to point out to you is you have the ability, it is a free process to get certified in um, Read and Write Gold version 11. I will be sending um, the documents over that show you how to go on our website to do that. Um, it's a free process, um, but basically we will um, give you some training um, online. You will um, take a quiz. Um, just to ensure that you're comfortable with, uh, with the different icons on the toolbar. And then you'll actually create a project for your classroom. It'll be up to you uh, what you want to do. You, that will be something that you will be able to use. And then after that, you will be certified in um, Read and Write Gold version 11. So I'll make sure that you get the link to sign up for that certification. It's just done on your own time online at your convenience. So um, we're here to help you. Um, if there's any way that we can help, please let the team at CBE know. Um, we will be back to do an in-person, on-site training the last week of February. Um, so we'll be there for that and um, also returning again later in the spring for some on-site training. So you have all these great web resources for you. We're looking forward also to seeing you in person soon. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Um, and good luck with you and your students. We look forward to seeing your, um, your success in the classroom and also your student success.